Hey guys, Rob Sambles here from Rob Sambles Photography. Now, um, first of all, so I'm lying on the floor. Why am I lying on the floor? Because I'm going to show you guys my floor remote and we set that up on the floor. And I want you to better get a zoomed in, um, or at least not zoomed in, but a close enough look at it. So I thought I'd get down here. Um, and actually, I have to be lying face down on the floor like this for part of setting up this remote, which we'll see in a second. Now, a couple of people have asked about this and, and I was going to do it in my basketball workflow video, but I never actually kind of did it because I decided not to do a remote on that day. So I thought I'd do a separate video just about this remote. Now, this is a floor remote that I use for uh, basketball, which is used to capture photos. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what, so I'll, I'll put a photo into the video. So it's to capture photos like this. So you guys can see the, the, the photo there. Um, and this is for um, wide angle kind of basketball stuff. Now I set this up so it sits just in front of where I'm sitting shooting. Um, and I'll kind of demonstrate that for you at the end. So first of all, what, what do I need to do this? I've got a camera body and a lens. This is a Canon 7D Mark II. And the lens here, this is my Sigma uh, 18 to 35 f 1.8. Uh, you don't have to use these. You need something fairly wide angle. So this is, um, I'll have this fully open at 18mm. Um, so you probably would need something that's like, on a crop body, which this is a 72, you're going to need something that's like um, at least 18 or maybe 17 mil wide. The 1755 could work. You could even go really wide. You could do like the 10 to 20 mil, something like that, and go out of 10 mil. That'd probably be a bit wide for me. I'm positioning this kind of out near the corner of the court, so somewhere near like where the three-point line comes into the baseline, that's about where I'm sitting. Or the photo I showed you guys a minute ago, that's about where this camera was positioned at 18mm. So that gives you an idea of the perspective I get. That's 18mm on a crop body, of course. Um, so, you know, maybe on um, on full frame, you probably actually would need to be slightly um, slightly less wide, maybe 24 mil, something like that. But it's about playing around, guys. I've tried this at all different, um, you know, all different focal lengths, and that, that's the idea of doing this. There's no set settings that you would necessarily use for this. You guys can practice with that. And I'll, I'll tell you what I typically would do, but it's really, really important to understand that that will vary, you know, the, um, depending on the light in the hall, that will vary depending on um, you know what angle exactly you're at depending on the background it might vary your settings will need to change and you know you guys watching this video I'm sure have got the capability to work that part out for yourself anyway but I'll show you roughly what I would do with this so we need the camera and the lens I should also say I've got the grip attached to this you don't necessarily have to have the grip but but I will because I think it gives the camera a bit better balance for what I'm going to do with this I've then got my triggers you guys have seen these triggers in my previous videos, very simple. This is my Yongnuo um, RF-603C, which I think there's a comment in one of my videos, someone asked about those, that's what they are. Uh, you get the two, the one with the cable, and then the other one. I'm gonna need gaffer tape. Any gaffer tape will do, it doesn't have to be orange. I just have this spare, because this is the gaffer tape I use to mark my lenses like this. Um, so I had some of that left over. You could use any gaffer tape. You could use thicker tape if you wanted to, but this is just what I've got. And then this little beauty. Now this is two AA batteries stuck together, not stuck together, but put together and then taped around with gaffer tape. So that's what that is. That's two AA batteries taped around with gaffer tape. Now, this isn't, I'm not the first person to do this kind of floor remote, guys. Um, I actually, I first saw this, um, there's a guy called Seth Sanchez, um, he's based in the States, who does a lot of good videos on sports photography, and that's where I first got this idea from. But I've since seen loads of other people do it as well, so, you know, this isn't a new idea, but this is just, just what I do. So, we're going to need those. The reason we use those is because that is the perfect height for the, um, the base that we're going to set up for the camera in a minute, which you'll see. So let's start with doing that first. Let's get the base attached to the camera. Now what we're gonna do, the camera body will put upside down, like so. Now this is gonna get taped onto the front. Okay, so it's gonna go on the bottom, on the front. Right about there. You guys can see where that is. So let me tape it on, and then I'll show you guys a little bit closer angle of exactly how this looks, okay? You don't need too much tape, but at the same time, you know, don't don't be shy with how much you use because you want it to stay on there. 
Sometimes it does come off or it moves around a bit, but you know, like I said, this is a remote that's gonna be sat right in front of me. It's not like it's gonna be attached somewhere far away from where I am or anything like that. That's one. Two. Now, that's very simple, guys. You guys can use more tape, less tape, whatever's enough to make it stick, okay? You guys can see where I put that. I've put it right on the bottom, sat there. Now, the idea being that this will now sit on the floor like that, okay? So we have it pointing upwards towards the basket. Now we're gonna use the triggers. So the first trigger goes on top, just sits in the horseshoe, and then it plugs in to the shutter release in the side. You guys working with Canon will pretty much do this exactly the same way. Uh, Nikon, to be honest, I'm not sure. Nikon, Nikon, however you guys say it. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm sure it's pretty much the same. Now, what I should say, these triggers, they have to be fired in hand. You can't fire a shutter release with this in the horseshoe of your other camera. So this is something you have to fire in your hand. But I actually prefer it like that, because I only really want this camera to fire when I want it to. I don't want it to be firing every single time I take a shot on my other camera. Okay. So then we're set up. Now the first thing I'll do, we just turn it on. And my first advice is always just double check that your triggers are firing. So let's just give this a quick go. There you go, you, can, you guys can probably hear the noise on the camera, it's firing. And I've got it in um, a high speed shutter, so if I want to I can fire loads off at the same time. Show that. There we go. So, now we're gonna set this up. Like I said, we're set up wide. I've got this out to 18 mil. Now I generally, for this, I will set this to f4 because I want a little bit of depth of field because it's quite wide and it's remote. I want a bit of depth of field, so I normally have it set to about f4. Now my shutter speed, now this is the bit that guys, you, you, you have to check in the venue you're in. I, I want the shutter speed quite high because I want it to freeze the action. Normally when I shoot basketball, I'm aiming for at least 800th of a second. For a remote, because I um, have to come out to f4 a little bit, I will slow that down slightly. So I, for this, I would go to about 640th of a second. You probably could get away with 500th, um, depends what level. If it's not pro, then you could probably even go slower because they, they move slightly slower than pro level. But basketball is quick, whatever. If people jump, you know, they, they fall back down to the ground at the same speed. So they move quick and the ball moves quick. So if you want to freeze everything, you want to be aiming for probably about 640th. And then your ISO, guys, you, you just got to set that depending on, on what you have. Some of you guys might have auto ISO. Um, the auto ISO on the camera here is actually pretty good on the 72, um, but it, it will depend. So we then set up um, with the settings. Now, the next thing we need to do is to focus properly on where we want, we want to shoot. Now, there's lots of ways you can do this. You can get a friend or a colleague um, or just like the guy who's going to um, clean the floor or something like that uh, to go and stand for you under the basket or like roughly in the spot where somebody will be um, standing if they're going to be laying up. So what I would probably do is I would get someone to stand about a foot further away from me than where the basket is. That's because generally speaking, someone comes through, they'll drive with their right hand, they'll be just slightly further away than I am from the basket, and so I want that to be in focus, and that's where I want my focus point to be. And what I do is literally, I will set the camera up where I want it to go, like this. I will get that person to go and stand where I want them to stand. Now, I, this is the bit which I lie down for. I come in behind the camera, I'm on manual focus still at this point, and I will literally, from here, I will focus on where they are, and I'll get the camera to focus on them, and boom, we're focused, and then I will put it down right to where I want it to go. Now, you guys can do this different ways. You can lean, and you can look through the viewfinder, or if you guys have got live view, it's a bit easier. You switch to live view, and you can see on your screen exactly what you're looking at. So I get the angle just right. I've already focused the distance, provided I now don't move the camera like massively forwards or backwards. I roughly know where, I'm, that, where I am on focus. I use the live view on the back just to make sure that it's exactly where I want it to be. And boom, we're all set up. Now, the important thing to do now is to change your lens to manual focus so it's not gonna try and refocus when you press the shutter release, you're on manual focus. Now, if you want to, with a lot of remotes, I then would use more gaffer tape, 
to take the focus ring down so there's no risk of it moving. Me personally, for this type of remote, I don't do that because this is sat right in front of me anyway. So I, I can adjust it if I need to. Okay, um, what else do we do? So that's then pr pretty much um, set up and ready to go. You've done your focus, you've done your um, settings and your, you've got the, um, the view within the camera that you want. Now, the only other thing I do, because I normally will be sitting on the baseline here, there's a potential safety risk involved with this camera being sat there. Now, it's easy when I'm sat in the corner. If someone comes towards me, I can normally quickly slide out of the way or I can move quite quick. But if this is sat on the floor in front of me, I, I can't necessarily do that. So what I do, I literally sit with this just in front of me. So, guys, my head's going to get out of the picture for a second, but let me just show you. I will be sat shooting basketball, literally, with this right right in front of me like this so if i needed to if someone comes in i can quickly grab it out of the way sometimes i will even attach the strap to the camera and i will look at that, the batteries come off so i should use more gaffer tape sometimes i will even literally attach the camera strap to this so that the strap comes up behind me here so that if i need to i can grab that strap and just pull this and bump this out of the way now the trouble is with that as soon as I move this, I've then lost exactly where it was sitting because I'd already set it up with the focus and everything else. So here's something you guys can do. Get yourself a tiny bit of gaffer tape, just a small piece like that. And when your camera's all set up, your remote's all set up, put this just to the left-hand edge, just behind where you want your camera to go. So you guys can now see, I've just, you can't see it probably on the floor, but I've just put it just behind the camera here. Now, if I take this away, for whatever reason, there's an emergency or something, I'll take Sorry, it guys, away. Sorry guys, my, my, my uh, camera I'm filming this on just cut off there for a second, so I've just had to quickly come back to it. But So we were talking about if I've got the, um, the I'll put this little piece of gaffer tape on the floor. Pretend this is stuck, uh, I'm not gonna stick it back. So I've positioned this just behind the camera on the left. Now if there's an emergency, and I have to quickly grab this out of the way, the trouble is now, is if I'm not sure where to put it, if I put it down, my focus point, which I set up earlier, um, isn't going to be right anymore. So the idea is with this tiny piece of tape I've put on the floor, I know that if I put this back just in front of that tape, lined up like that, bump, it's roughly, or pretty much in fact exactly now, where it was when I first set it up in the first place. And that's the idea with that tape, it just helps you guide it and stick it back. And there we go guys, that's all done, it's good to go. You know, um, I would always recommend just giving it another quick um, test shot before you actually start to use it and off you go. Um, the way in which I actually shoot with this, um, I hold this in my left hand with the button by my thumb. Uh, pretend this is my, my main body for a second. I'm then shooting the game and if I need to, I can just press the, the shutter with my thumb. So it does enable you to fire this manually whilst using another body. That's my remote camera guys. Uh, if you look back at my blog, I did another video about my behind the goal um, football remote camera, if you guys are interested in that. I did that a couple of years ago though actually, so I might do a, a new post about that at some point. But this is my basketball floor remote. I do some other remotes for basketball sometimes too, and I'll do some bits on that at some point too. Um, I hope you found it interesting guys. Please feel free to ask questions, stick in the comments, um, you know, whatever you want. I'll see if I can help out and try to answer those. Uh, thank you for watching guys. I'll, I'll flash up another couple of photos at the end here of um, the type of photos I've caught with this exact remote so you can see how it looks. Yeah guys, thanks for watching. Cheers.